No captivity. Freezy. Freezy. What up? You are officially locked in and no captivity with Freezy, where we tackle issues that sometimes have us trapped in this thing that we call life. But if you know me, you know my motto. To free yourself, you must heal yourself. Let me hear you say it. To free yourself, you gotta heal yourself. And if you're right with your boy Freezy, please hit the like and subscribe button hard right now and also comment and share this video that is if you're out with your boy freezy white man shoot 16 year old black kid in the head by mistake or was it y'all stay tuned to this entire story so you can make a judgment for your damn self the young man's name is ralph y'all who's presently still in critical condition in the hospital as we speak no captivity how about we head on over to the no cap room so we can get some more details on this story? Because I'm already pissed off. Real talk. This one here for the thug. So the person who shot Ralph Yar goes by the name of Andrew Lester, a white homeowner in Kansas City, Missouri. And shout out to Independent TV for giving us more details about this situation and how Ralph Yar got shot. No cap, Tivity. And the story goes, so a black teenager by the name of Ralph Yall was shot by a white homeowner after he accidentally rang the doorbell at the wrong address while trying to pick up his brothers. That's all he was trying to do. The 16-year-old's interaction with the suspect in the northland suburb of Kansas City quickly turned violent, and the high school student was left hospitalized with serious injuries. Instead of going to a home in the 1100 block of Northeast 115th Terrace in Kansas City, Missouri to pick up his brothers, he mistakenly went to Northeast 115th Street, police said. Now prosecutors have brought charges against the homeowner, Andrew D. Lester. No captivity. And here's everything we know about the suspect so far. So Andrew D. Lester is 84 years old and he was charged on April 17th. Clay County Prosecutor Zachary Thompson confirmed in a press conference that, quote unquote, there was a racial component to the case, but would not give details on what had caused him to come to that conclusion. Mm-hmm. It's already looking suspect. This one here for the thug. For the thug. Prosecutors charge Andrew D. Lester with assault in the first degree, which carries a punishment of 10 to 30 years or life in prison. He has also been charged with armed criminal action, which carries a punishment of 3 to 15 years. Mr. Thompson said that a bond has been set of 200,000 guapos, but that the suspect is not yet in custody. Well, damn, where the hell he at? All my no-cap crew, listen in, because here's how the whole incident happened. A witness told police that they saw a vehicle pull into Mr. Lester's driveway at around 9.30 p.m. Mr. Lester told investigators that he had just laid down when the doorbell rang. Then he picked up a 32 pistol and opened the interior door of his house. He told police that he saw a black male pulling on the door and thought he was trying to break into the property. Mm-hmm. This one here for the thug. Mr. Lester said that he fired twice and that no words were exchanged with the victim. But check this out though. During an informal police interview at Children's Mercy Hospital, the teenager said that he did not pull the door and was waiting outside. No captivity. Come on, dawg. He told investigators that a man opened the door and immediately shot him, causing him to fall to the ground where he was shot for a second time. Damn. The boy told the police the man said, don't come around here. The prosecutor of Clay County said, I can tell you that there was a racial component to this case. I don't want to comment on specifics of the case, to protect this integrity. Y'all had not entered the home when Lester allegedly shot him through a glass door. Clay County Prosecutor Zachary Thompson said, Check this out. This tragic incident has caught the attention of the likes of Halle Berry and also Viola Davis, urging the prosecutor to bring charges against the homeowner. But God is good because meanwhile, a GoFundMe account was created to help raise funds for the treatment of Ralph Yarl. And as of around midday Eastern time on Monday, less than 24 hours after it lunched, a staggering $1.2 million had been raised. I ain't just talking. That's all you do. God is good all the time. On the campaign page, a woman who identified herself as Ralph's aunt described the teenager as a fantastic kid who has dreams of going to Texas A&M University to major in chemical engineering. And guess what? 
it looked like he ain't gonna have no problem getting there. So it seems Ralph Yard was far from a thug and was only trying to be responsible by picking up his brothers. Ain't that some? No captivity. But like what's already been stated, he's still alive, but in critical condition. So I'm asking all of the people watching this right now to keep this intelligent, responsible young kid in your prayers. No captivity. Good Lord, what do you have for us today? Oh, there he go. He's coming to us from Romans 8 and 28. And it reads, And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Right there. There he go. And I want to give a special shout out to Lady Navo and Justin Wade for their sponsorship to the show. If you have a heart to promote stories of this magnitude, be a sponsor today by sending a cash app to dollar sign freezing 1976. PayPal info is in the description below. No matter what amount you give, it will be deeply appreciated. And please y'all, like, share, and subscribe to my channel, No Captivity with Freezy. No Captivity and hit that notification bell as well so you can be up on all the latest updates that we release. And like I always say, to free yourself, you must heal yourself. And until the next time, we out of here. No captivity. Freezy, freezy, 